Hello family, we thank God for today. Today I'm reading Exodus chapter 19 from verse 20 to verse 25. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and he went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, go down, warn the people so that they do not break through the barriers around the mountain to the Lord to see me and many of them perish as a result. Also, have the priests who approach the Lord consecrate, sanctify, set apart themselves for my sacred purpose, or else the Lord will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. Verse 23, to pay um, attention to this, it says, Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you warned us, saying, set barriers around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Go down and come up again, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through the barriers to come up to the Lord, or he will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them again about God's warning. I want to share with you today that despite God's greatness, he permits those that are close to him to reason with him. I want you to just imagine this, this great God, this awesome God, who had demonstrated such great signs and wonders through the plagues on behalf of the people of Israel, patted the Red Sea so that they would walk through on dry ground, done some amazing things that had never been seen before. And this God who when the Bible says that when he descended upon the mountain of Sinai, the mountain quaked, that the people became terrified. His voice thundered. And when this God then in his conversation with Moses says to Moses, that also have the priests approach the Lord, Moses has the audacity to say to God, God, they cannot come up to the mountain because you want us saying, set barriers around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Bible says, this glorious God, this mighty God, whose power cannot be compared to the power of anybody, not living or dead, or nobody that ever will exist, when Moses said that to him, he didn't get upset. He didn't get offended. But he actually then goes on to say to Moses, go down and come up again. You and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through the barriers to come up to the Lord. And as I just read this, I thought, you know, it is only Jehovah God, the only living God, the only true God that you and I serve. Who is so gracious, so great, yet he can come down to the level of human beings and even say to entertain a human being, giving him not counsel, but kind of reasoning with him and saying, well, Lord, you've said that, God, you've said that, but actually they can't come up the mountain. Just imagine that, picture that. I've never heard of any other religion where the God that they serve gives its worshippers the opportunity for them to reason with it. I've never heard that. But this God that you and I serve, the awesome and mighty God, the only living God, gave Moses the opportunity to actually have a discourse with him, for him to actually say, actually, what you've said, Moses, on the basis of what you've said, the priests are not going to come up. And why I think this is a big deal is that I want us to look at a scripture in Isaiah chapter 40, reading a few verses from verse 13, just to remind us of how great our God is. In fact, I will start reading from verse 12 of Isaiah 40. It says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span of the hand, and calculated the dust of the earth with a measure, and weighed the mountains in a balance, and the hills in a pair of skills. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or has taught him as his counsellor? With whom did he consult, and who enlightened him? 
who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and informed him of the way of understanding. In fact, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are regarded as a speck of dust on the scales. Now look, he lifts up the islands like fine dust. The forests of Lebanon cannot supply sufficient fuel to start a fire, nor are its wild beasts enough for a burnt offering worthy of the Lord. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are regarded by him as less than nothing and meaningless. To whom then will you liken God? Or with what likeness will you compare him? As for the cast image, idol, a metal worker casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and a silversmith casts its silver chains. He who is too impoverished for such an offering to give to his God chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks out for himself a skillful craftsman to carve and set up an idol that will not totter. Do you who worship idols not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth the omnipotence of God and the stupidity of bowing to idols? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heavens like a veil, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. It is he who reduces dignitaries to nothing, who makes the judges rulers of the earth meaningless, useless. Scarcely have they been planted, scarcely have they been sown, scarcely has their stock taken root in the earth, but he merely blows on them, and they wither, and a strong wind carries them away like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I would be his equal, says the Holy One. And that is verse 25. This is just giving us a glimpse of who God is. And this God did not get upset with Moses, did not get offended by what Moses said, but actually had this discourse with Moses. But it was all because Moses had proven himself worthy he had developed a relationship with god and on the basis of that relationship he wasn't fearful in talking to god and so today as i share this with you i want us to know that let us be reminded that god is a god who is loving and who is gracious a God who wants to have relationship with us so that we can come before him and be bold even in our conversations with him. Moses wasn't frightened at all by telling God what he told God. And on many occasions throughout scripture, and we will be looking at some of it in the next few weeks as we carry on looking um, at the life of what Moses and what he did for the people of Israel in Exodus. There are several occasions when God even made up his mind that he was going to destroy the people. Moses would go to God and, and reason with God and say, God, you cannot kill these people because they are your they are your own people, and on and on and on. And God would heed Moses' request. This gracious God, mighty God, the one who doesn't need anybody's permission to do what he wants to do. He doesn't owe anybody an explanation. Sometimes we question God, but really we don't. He doesn't owe any of us an explanation. He is God all by himself. Our worship of him doesn't make him God. Yet, he gives us this privileged opportunity that we can come to him and reason with him. And so in Isaiah 1, reading from verse 16. To verse 18 it says wash yourselves make yourselves clean get your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing evil learn to do good seek justice rebuke the ruthless defend the fatherless plead for the rights of the widow in court verse 18 come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Imagine God giving an invitation to people who are not even worthy. They are sinful people. But he gives them an invitation and says, come, let us reason together. Even though your sin is like scarlet, you shall be made white as snow. Though it's red like crimson, they shall be like wool. It is the same God who did that 
and gave Moses access to him so that Moses could go boldly before God and could have this a discourse with God that some of us may not even dare, not because God is a fearful or frightening God, but because we've not built a relationship or developed a relationship with him to the point where we have that confidence to be able to go before him. And so on this note, I just want to ask a question. And I'm asking myself that same question, that if God was to evaluate our relationship with him, would we be like Moses, where we would have the audacity, not because, or not out of dis disrespect, but out of confident trust in the relationship that we have with God, be bold to actually reason with God? Or will we be those who will not have that confidence because we've not developed that relationship where we can actually have the sort of discourse that Moses had with God? Whatever the answer is, if it's in the affirmative, praise God. If it's not, God is a gracious God, a loving God. And I'm always reminded that even when Adam and Eve sinned against God and he was casting them out of the Garden of Eden, he still provided them with clothes before he sent them out. It is only a loving God who will do that. And it's the same God that you and I are serving. And it's the same God who is saying to you and I, that though he is great and mighty, he still permits those that are close to him to be able to reason with him. On this note, we're going to go over a new memory verse that we'll be looking at in the next couple of days. And it's in Isaiah 55 verse 7. It says, let the wicked leave behind his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord. And he will have compassion, mercy on him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. We're going to personalize this by saying. We have left behind our wicked ways. And our unrighteous thoughts. We have returned to the Lord. And he has had compassion on us. And to our God, and he has abundantly pardoned us. The Lord bless you, cause his face to shine upon you, and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.